This is my milling spindle uh, mounted vertically rather than the usual horizontal position uh, on top of the lathe. I just moved this round here, you can see how I've mounted it. It's a bit slightly um, Heath Robinson, but it's rigid enough to work. So it sits on top of the top slide, so I can then use the top slide to move it uh, up and down the bed and the cross slide um, to move across it. And as you can see at this point here someone has gouged out a horrible mess uh, probably with um, a disc cutter or something like that. Uh, there's, they've also touched it slightly on the far side here but that doesn't really affect anything so I'm going to leave that but this bit here um, is just looks horrible and uh, what I shall do is to take out a square so I'm, I'm, I've, you can see where I've machined so far just to, one to make sure everything was set up correctly um, and I'll machine that down probably about um, eight, eight millimeters or so and then I'll make up a piece of cast iron to fit the, the space and then glue it in with uh, JB Weld um, and um, then I'll machine it um, using the same arrangements as I've got now and that should work fine um, as a repair and look a heap better than it does now Right, turning on the milling spindle Right, I've now gone down 6 millimetres, and I think I'm going to call it a day at that. Uh, it's getting a little bit difficult to machine. If I catch the edge here, it tends to spin the slot round because it's only secured on one bolt. Um, and I think I'll just repair this little bit here, um, which won't be seen once the uh, plate's on the top there. Um, it'll be... Um, uh, JB Weld, which I'm sure will hide that. Uh, and anyway, this whole of this plate is just cosmetic in any event. 
So the next job is to make up the plate and dismantle this lot. I finished cutting out the slot at the back which will be filled in with the cast iron piece that I've made up and you can see the blue on the surface there I've uh, blued up and printed off my surface plate it's not quite long enough for this job but it'll do for the time being um, and checked where the high spots are taken small scrapings off each just to be sure that they're not sticking up because when this piece is glued in here I need to make sure that that is absolutely level with the top surface. This is the piece that I've milled out and I've lapped the top surface so that it's flat and I've figured out a way of holding it I just clean out the glue that's gone into the recess. Take that little bit off there. That's the piece that I've milled out. And um, what I need to do now is to make sure that this is absolutely flush with the top. And I've discovered the best way of doing that is to use um, a magnet at each end. So I put a magnet in there, a magnet in there. I can feel that it is absolutely flush with the top. So what I'll do is I'll glue that and then pull it up with the magnets so that it's touching the top. Now if you listen and watch carefully you can see that it just has a little bit of movement so it is pulled up flush with the top. That's going to work well. So when that's glued in with uh, JB Weld, which is what I shall use, it's the material that uh, most people would use for this job, I guess. It's a special epoxy. Right, uh, now ready to glue that in um, after a little bit of cleaning up. see in the mill here where I cut the section out and milled it out with a milling cutter. Right, I've uh, cleaned off the glue from the little plate that I let in and glued in. Um, and that's turned out really very well, I'm pleased with that. Uh, and I put the tailstock in just so that you can see how much of uh, the tailstock bears on which surfaces. I'll just move this up so that you can see a little bit better. And you can see here there's a gap between this surface and this surface. So the whole of the tailstock is bearing just on that flat surface and on that V and on that V so and not on the top of the V either so the fact that there's some burrs and things along here provided there's nothing on that angle or on that angle uh, then uh, there won't be any problem with them affecting the accuracy on this surface I have got an intact surface all the way round and this is pretty flat. Um, I will just put a, a blued surface plate on here just to do a print to check. But that um, with a straight edge looks set 
absolutely dead flush with the uh, surrounding metal so it mustn't be above it uh, so that's the only real thing I have to be concerned about and in which case I just scrape a little bit off till it's uh, it is slightly uh, level or slightly below but I, that feels really very good I'm pleased with that um, annoying that there's these little burrs and things it's just cosmetic um, but there we go it is an old lathe um, and then on the inside surface here it shows a little bit where the glue line is I'm not worried about that because when the lathe is in use it'll never be seen because the uh, cross slide compound slide will be sitting on top of here most of the time um, and uh, it will not bear against that surface so um, I've cleaned up the ways just with a scotch bright and um, that has just taken the worst of the dirt out on here and you can see that this surface here is just a machine surface there's nothing special about it that's also machined um, and uh, that nothing bears on it. It's, it it could be anything and looking at this side of it where the headstock is this is beautifully smooth of course underneath where the headstock sits that's um, absolutely perfect condition um, but along here it's a little bit marked and scuffed but it's not bad and it's certainly there's no terrific amount of wear um, on the V here there's only a tiny bit of wear on the side on on the outside of this V here there's a, there's very very little wear but there is just a touch uh, but nothing to worry about so all told this is actually quite a nice lathe um, and should produce some nice accurate work for years and years yet so that's finished now for the moment um, yeah so that uh, little patch I put in really is hardly visible even on a quick look so I'm well pleased with that I'd certainly do that again if I had to, uh, the need the main problem is getting the cast iron of the right thickness and that requires a whole lot of milling milling out the slot and then milling out the patch but yeah, that's turned out well.